Let's demold the handle. And another great slip cast handle with very minimal flash. And we're cast solid. Clean up the seam real quick. There we go, one new handle. Hi, I'm Kent. Let's make some more 3D printed handle molds for slip casting. Recently I made these molds and these were made using some 3D printed parts. This here is my mold system. There's a bottom plate. There's an inner mold that's the shape of the handle that fits down in there. And then a couple of outer pieces. This all gets taped together. We pour in plaster, we let it set and then do that twice and we have our molds. This mold here makes a handle about this size. This is my design proof once it's fully fired. More specifically handles like this. And while this handle works great for these larger forms, these taller forms, I have some shorter forms that I would like to go ahead and put handles on as well. And this is just too big. So in this video we're going to go ahead and make a few more handle molds. Here are a bunch of prototypes that I made. When I was thinking about handles and variations, there are a ton of different parameters. Right now I'm trying to keep them rotationally symmetric so that you only need one 3D print to make both halves. That means they're mirrored top to bottom. And there are a bunch of parameters we can change here. The obvious one that we change here is height, the overall height. And I'm measuring that from the very bottom to the very top. So this dimension here, likewise here. We also change how wide the handle is. These are all 35 millimeters wide. So far that's been a pretty good dimension. If you want something wider, definitely let me know. It's easier to make shorter. Basically you can just trim the handle shorter when you're attaching it to your pot. Just like I showed you in the intro. If you want, you can just slice it shorter. There's also a curvature here. And finally there are the dimensions for the cross section of the handle itself. So the width, the thickness, and some parameters describing the curvature. So I was playing around with all these and very quickly got overwhelmed and decided to keep it simple. So here I just manipulated the height. The curvature of the handle, the profile, everything else is the same. And I have 10 different versions. I basically went from 55 millimeters outside dimension to 100 millimeters. It's approximately two to four inches. So within here, hopefully there will be a handle that will fit your mug. And if you're interested, I have the models for these exact handles up on the Shapecast website for sale. From these, I went ahead and selected a couple, and we'll use those to make the next round of molds. So since I already have a big handle, I went ahead and picked the 75 millimeter handle and the 55. And for the 55, I'm actually trying a slightly different shape, one with some slightly tighter radiuses. So for a larger handle, you can easily put several fingers in there, especially me with big hands, no problem. I wanted something a little bit smaller and even smaller for the other handles. Of course, you can pick what works well with your forms. And I went ahead and printed out the associated molds that we need to pour plaster. And just like the other ones, these come in four parts. There's a bottom plate with a little recess, the handle form itself, and then some outer walls. 
These are just like the other mold that I showed, only they have the different dimensions. They, the height has changed. So there's a space here with a little recess in it, and that corresponds to the handle form. So this will slot down inside, just like that, and we'll secure it down in a minute. There's a couple of features here that correspond to plaster keys and a couple of features on the outside that are alignment for the walls. So there's one wall here, and another wall here that has some cutouts for the handle. And we'll just tape this all together. And then I did the exact same thing for the larger handle size. So let's go ahead and put the molds together so we can pour plaster. I've just been using this tuck tape here. This is often used for pouring resin it's very sticky tape and it's also waterproof so the plaster won't leak through. So there's a hole here in the bottom and we need to basically tape the handle part to the bottom plate. If you want, you can tape all the way around. I've just been taping in a few different spots, making sure that it's all the way seated. You don't want a gap, you want it all the way pushed down. I can't reach my finger in there, so I'll just take the back of a brush, push down, make sure it's well adhered, pull and fold it over. There we go, something like that. Now this isn't completely sealed, obviously. We're relying upon the tight fit between the handle piece and the bottom plate and the fact that there is this corner so the plaster doesn't come out. So far, that hasn't been an issue. Next up, the walls. So these little pins are for, so they just get seated in the right spot. Right, are the two edges. Then we want to tape around the bottom on all sides. There we go, all around the bottom, and the handle's taped down. I'll go ahead and do this one real quick. There we go, two different sized handle molds all ready to go. Obviously this here is the handle profile, and then this is the sprue that we'll use to pour in the slip. Same for this one. These came straight off my printer. I printed them on the fine setting, and I've been using these without doing any surface prep. If you want, you can go ahead and prime and sand these or do some other preparation to do the 3D print to make it even smoother. However, by the time you clean up the seam lines, I've tended to basically go over the whole handle a little bit, and any of the little artifacts there basically disappear, and especially when it's glazed. You basically don't see any of those prints at all. If you're using a clear glaze or a thin glaze or no glaze at all, obviously then the surface of the clay matters much, much more. And these are just printed in regular PLA. You could probably use some other filaments if you wanted, but basic plain PLA works just fine. So next up will be plaster. So let's go ahead and get ready for that. First, we need to know the volume of the plaster we're gonna pour. So I just got a ruler here. I'll go ahead and measure that up. So I'll call this 11 centimeters by 8.5 by three. And I'm rounding up just a little bit. And this one will be Call it 14 by the same 8.5, which makes sense because the handle is the same, which means the depth should be the same as well. And indeed it is. So now let me go ahead and multiply this all out and figure out how much plaster we need. All right, I'm sure you can't read my handwriting, but this one here is basically 280 milliliters. This one's around 360. So add it together, we get 640. And I like rounding up, so I'm going to shoot for 750 milliliters of volume. That'll be more than we need because we have the shape of the handle. Even though I live in inches land, doing this in metrics is very convenient. One, we can go from measurements of distance into volume, very straightforward. Also, for the plaster I'm using, basically for every milliliter of plaster volume that we need to fill up, we need one gram of plaster. So if we need 750 milliliters or 0.75 liters of volume to fill up, we need 0.75 kilograms of dry plaster. 
So it winds up making things very easy. All right, our 750 grams of dry plaster, and we want a 70 to 100 ratio of water to plaster, so we need 525 grams. Now, obviously, I'm doing these both together. If you wanted, you could print two halves and do one pour to basically get both halves, or you can do what I'm gonna do and go ahead and reuse this one mold twice for each half. So we'll use this one twice, and then we'll use this one twice, and we'll wind up with four plaster pieces to make two different handle molds. All right, for the plaster, basically you wanna take the dry and put it on the wet, but we wanna go ahead and do that very slowly. We'll then let the plaster hydrate for three and a half minutes. We'll then mix for four minutes, and then we'll pour it into the molds. If you want to go ahead and put your favorite release agent on the PLA, I have found that they actually wind up being rather counterproductive. I've done some testing in the past and it winds up messing with the surface finish, at least it has for me. So if you really want to, you can, but straight off the 3D printer works just fine for me. All right, so to help with putting the plaster on slowly, I picked this up. This is originally meant to be a flour sifter and now it is a plaster sifter. And I just dump the plaster in. Just like that, and I push the button, and it vibrates the plaster down. I am very impatient at dumping the plaster out, and I found that this actually makes a huge difference in the quality of the plaster. And I'm just keeping an eye on it, making sure the water can keep up with the plaster going down. It'll bound up a little bit, but you don't want it too much. All right, I'll go ahead and set my timer for three and a half minutes. I think I'll go ahead and clean up the dry plaster on the edge here so it doesn't fall down in. All right, now we mix for four. And based on the manufacturer's recommendations, we wanna mix this as vigorously as possible. That's what causes the strength while introducing as few bubbles as possible. Here are our molds, make, do one last check to make sure there's nothing in them. And then pour a nice long thin stream so the bubbles have a chance to pop on the way down. If you have a favorite vibratory mechanism, go ahead and use it now. I found that just tapping it gently a little bit has been working just fine. The plaster is cured. It's been about an hour. Let's go ahead and remove the tape and do the first part of the demolding. There's no plaster that escaped the bottom. That's the first one. All right, I'm gonna take the bottom off first. There's nothing holding on besides that little flange. Perfect. Again, looks good. We got a little bit of plaster that leaked out here, but it should be fine. And then because of the curves on the mold, we have to pull these out from the sides. We can't go up or down. seam here. Let's take a knife and clean it up. It's nice to handle. And sometimes we get a little bit of plaster here. This one looks good. This one there's a little bit overhanging. This is just the sprue though, so it doesn't really matter. All right, there we go. We're most of the way there. All we need to do is to pull the inner mold out, the handle part itself. According to the manufacturer, after an hour, which it's been, the plaster is basically as hard as it's gonna get until it's fully cured. However, I think since this has been encased in plastic, it's probably a good idea to let the moisture evaporate a little bit more. And so we'll come back to this in a little while before we pull out the inner molds. And we'll do that because this wall here is the one that's the most delicate. 
All right, this is set for maybe another hour or so. Now we want to very carefully remove the inner handle mold from the plaster. Basically just go nice and slow, try and keep it even. Don't let it rack and it should come out. So the PLA will flex just a little bit. Although the geometry of the corners means it doesn't really flex much than that spot. And I found just some needle nose pliers to help pull a little bit. Don't dig into the plaster though. And let's go nice and slow, be patient. There you go, perfect. No breakout at all. All right, and same thing. Looks like we got some like, tiny little bubbles right on the edge there, but I don't think we're gonna notice those at all. We wash these off to reset and do it again. Plaster comes off really easily. The only thing you want to be careful of is this little groove here. I wanna make sure you get all the little plaster out because some will leak down in there. I need to touch it up just a little bit more. Same thing for the other one. Again, get all the plaster out of that little groove. So I'll go ahead and do one last touch up, make sure you get all the plaster, tape it up just like before, and then we'll pour plaster again. All right, and just like before, we'll let the plaster cure. Two match sets. We have the smaller one here. These will fit together just like that. Looks good. There's the other one. I don't know how much matters, but I've heard that people will go ahead and rubber band these together while they dry. I don't know if that's just to keep them together so they don't lose them or if it's to help with the dryness of the plaster levels and maybe things move around a little bit. Either way, it doesn't seem like it would hurt. I'll go ahead and let these finish curing which will take a day or two, and then we can come back and try them out. It has been hot, so our molds are very dry, and they're still looking very good. So we'll go ahead and put them back together since I just pulled them apart to show you and get any last dust off of them. So I just mixed up my slip and put some in the container so it's easier to pour. Let's fill it all the way up into the sprue. And for my other mold, I've been letting it sit for basically half an hour. And in that time, the handles go ahead and cast solid. So as a starting point, we'll go ahead and do the same for these. Now to pull out the handles, take off the rubber band. and gently separate the two mold halves, just like that. And there's our handle. Got a little tiny bit of flash, but not much. There we go. And gently. And same thing, looking good. So I tried a couple different things for cutting off the sprues. I have some ideas there, but I haven't had a chance to get to them. So for right now, I've just been pulling them out the rest of the way. Again, you don't want to deform the handle. And you can see we do have a seam line, but it is very minimal. And 
just brushing your finger against it gets rid of most of it. So that means we had great alignment with our plaster and the mold together. And the other one, same thing, really easy to clean up that seam. All right, so what do I do about these sprues? I've been setting it up like this. I had laid them over and I tried cutting it inside the mold, but I didn't like either of those. So basically go down right to where the sprue is. And you can cut straight over. And if it chips out a little bit, you're chipping out in the sprue. So no big deal. And this way it's supporting itself. Just like that. And we're cast solid, which is good. We'll need to cut off a little bit more to, when we affix it to our pot. These are getting a little bit firm. I suspect I could have pulled them a little bit sooner. There's the other one. So all this goes in the reclaim. And what good are handles without pots to put them on? So off camera, I slipped cast these. This is a form I made for basically doing small little tests. I haven't been using it too much. I think it will look good with the little small handle. And this one's similar to my large tumbler form. However, it's a little bit shorter. I think they'll match the handle size is great. So what we wanna do is cut a little bit of curvature into the handle to match the curvature of the pot. There we go, something like that. If you wanted to make the handle even smaller, this would be the time to trim it back. You can slip and score. I've just been slipping. My handles so far have been just fine with that. Oh, this one's getting a little bit dry. Find where you want it on the pot. This one just fits, which is great. Gently push it down. Don't deform the pot. And then I've been taking some extra slip and making sure the seam's nice and full. Quick squeeze. Once this firms up a little bit more, we can deal with the seam. So there's that handle. Same for this one. Blade's getting a little bit of rust on it, so I'm leaving some iron oxide behind. I'll go ahead and cover these. That way all of the water levels homogenize. We have three different levels of water in our clay at this point. We have the pot, we have the handle which we cast solid, and then we have the wet slip that we just applied. If we have all those equalized, that means things will dry evenly and the handle should stay on no problem. And once things set up a little bit more, I'll take a sponge to this, clean up the rim, clean up the seam line, and we'll be good to go. And since it's been several days, the pot I made at the intro, I just went ahead and did that. This one's all bone dry at this point, and I had sponged it all off, and the seam lines basically disappeared. By the time this is bisked, glazed, and then finally fired again, you won't see it at all. And our molds worked great. So at this point, just go ahead and clean off this excess clay. I just like to rub it off. If anything's stubborn, you can use a sponge. And go ahead and put it back together. This can dry out, the other one as well. Small, medium, and the original large one. So I'm amassing a nice collection of handle molds, and if you would like any of these, definitely check out the Shapecast website. They're up there for you to make your own. The pots are bone dry now, and here's what the handles look like attached. Obviously these will shrink a little bit more, but I think they're working out pretty well. 
and then the larger one as well. There we go. Now for my molds to dry so I can go make a bunch more handles. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.